Welcome to the hangars of RAF Cardington, a repurposed Air Force base 50 miles outside London. This hangar's so big it has its own weather system inside and more than a few giant airships have glided out of its doors over the years. Now it's home to something new, originally developed for the US Army by British company Hybrid Air Vehicles, meet the Airlander 10. It's an airship, but not as we know it, and its distinctive shape has certainly been a talking point. That rotund shape fundamentally changes how air behaves around it. This is a hybrid airship, which actually has a lot in common with conventional fixed-wing aircraft. 60% of our lift comes from buoyant lift, so Archimedes' principle, we, the, the um, weight of the fluid displaced, in this case air, gives you upthrust. So we get 60% from that. But we also get about up to 40% of our lift from having an aerodynamic shape, so the air going over the whole hull, the whole body of the aircraft. The aerofoil, the wing shape, gets its into the air and allows it to fly and that allows us to have the controllability of an aircraft and it allows us to land very easily without lots of ground crew and without lots of infrastructure. And it's this, the landing, which gets people excited about airships. A bit like a car, it just needs somewhere one and a half times its size to touch down or park, removing the need for an airport to get in the air. The company hopes the next version of the ship might even remove the need for a ground crew. Simply by carrying its own mooring mast, this flying machine could set down virtually anywhere, no matter how remote. Oh, it's just so nice to... I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I just want to be next to it. <laughs> it's not every day that you come across a cuddly flying machine, but this is definitely one. It's a little bit soft here and squidgy. But uh, don't be fooled, there's actually over 30,000 cubic metres of helium inside here. That's roughly equivalent to a million party balloons. Up here, it's very rigid. And this doesn't actually have a structure. It's reasonably rigid because of all the gas inside. It is one beautiful machine. Because of the design, this hybrid airship is greener compared to a fixed-wing aircraft, using over two-thirds less fuel during a comparable flight. But of course, journeys will take a lot longer. Now, obviously, I couldn't take the real ship up unaccompanied, but I was given the chance to take the simulator for a test flight. And after some instruction from professional pilot David, I was en route to San Francisco. We're going to turn to the right, but initially it rolls to the left. Yeah, it does. Now it comes round, now it'll come round, 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 round. Big ships do that, apparently. The Navy guys who come here are quite happy with that, but I'm, it's not, not, a normal pilot would not recognise that as a, a characteristic. But. The first real-life use is likely to be cargo up to 10 tonnes, though the next model will be able to carry five times that. But no matter how pleasant the journey, just one of these costs over 25 million pounds to make. That's over 35 million dollars. It leaves some people wondering if this mode of travel will ever reward its investors with a profit. Well, I'm about to land my first simulated airship and my approach speed is about 30 knots and falling. And I'm just gonna go a little bit lower and to the left a tiny bit more, full reverse, there we go. And then this should probably come to a halt on its own by the looks of things. Gently bouncing around, the passengers in the back. <laughs> One or two people might have spilt their tea, but otherwise I think the landing was reasonably good, better than some I've had. 